I want you to shout a mighty hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer. Oh Lord, my Father, in this program today, let my heaven be open by mercy. Oh Lord, my Father, let my heaven be open by fire. Oh,
Magnify. Bless him for preserving your life. So good to us. He has been so kind to us. Praise him.
Begin to worship the name of the Lord. Adore Him. Give Him glory. It deserves to be worshipped. It deserves to be adored. It deserves to be magnified. He is the King of glory. He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. Open your mouth and bless Him. He has been so good to us. He has been so kind to us. He is the greatest. He is the highest God. Lord, we are grateful. There is no one like you. Thank you for today. Thank you because you are the God of all flesh. Thank you for the wonders. Thank you for miracles. All power belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship God. Almighty God, we appreciate you. Bless you for today. For all that you have done for us. Thank you for what you will do. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. For cases that you are going to settle tonight. Thank you for life that will be delivered. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Let there be manifestation of your power today. And that at the end of everything, there is going to be a miracle in our life. Thank you, Lord, because you have done it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. If you are expecting miracle from the Lord, shout a bigger hallelujah. God bless you. You can have your seat. Tell the person beside you, you are welcome. Can you tell the person again? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you that before you leave this place today, the Lord will visit you. If you are the person God is going to visit you, we shout a big amen. I believe your amen is going to be louder than that. Hallelujah. Today, we want to talk about let God arise. What are we talking about? Eh? We are talking about let God arise. I prophesy into the life of seven persons there. As we are going to pray today, the Lord will arise. Because of your family, He will arise. And He will fight for you. In the name of Jesus. You see, there are certain character of God that is revealed in the Bible. And the reason why they are written, it is to make us realize that the God we are serving is a man of war. And that's the reason why somebody is here. The Lord will fight for you. In the book of Psalm 68, from verses 1 to 4, 
Psalm 68 from verse 1 to 4. Psalm 68, the Bible says, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that ate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As was melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Somebody is there, you will sing. Sing praises to his name. Exalt him that rideth upon the heavens by his name, Jah. And rejoice before him. That is revealing to us that when God fight for you, or whenever God fight for you, his own children, he always give reason to dance and reason to rejoice. So the first thing we must understand is that the God we are serving is a man of war. There are a lot of instances in the Bible that reveal that. God is a man of war. This is the reason why his name is the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. If you look at the Old Testament, you will discover several places where God fights. Where God engaged himself in war. Oh, you say, but we are in New Testament dispensation. Oh, there are several cases of where God fights for his own, even in the New Testament. This is to tell you that we are serving God that is a man of war. That particular battle that is confronting your life. That challenges that is challenging you. That confrontation that is comforting you. God is interested in that battle. And by the time God begins to fight, oh my God, <laughs> by the time God begins to fight, you will have reason to shout hallelujah. But you must understand that God won't force himself into your battle. Until you invite him. Or someone do that on your behalf. For example, Abraham interceded for his brother Lot. His cousin Lot. He interceded for him. And as a result of the intercession of Abraham, Lot and his family was rescued. The church make an intercession for Peter. And Peter was delivered. So God won't force himself into your battle. <laughs> the truth is that if the church did not pray that day, Peter will also die. Peter will have prayed and then call on God whatever situation in your life 
that you thought is the will of God, that you thought it is how God wants it, that is a complete conspiracy and the desire of the enemy. Receive victory over it in the name of Jesus. So we must understand that one of the components of God is leg. He, God has legs. In fact, the Bible says he sat in the heaven and his two feet is touching the earth. He said the earth is his full store. That is how big God is. When the Bible is talking about the earth is his full store, it's talking about the dominion of God in the earth. That he controlled the universe. So wherever they are conspiring against you, you have seen all those conspiracy. So if he has leg, that means that he can arise as a mother. Let's say you sit down in your sitting room and you hear the voice of Mark, one of your son, and he shout, My head, my head, my head. Will you sit down in that sitting room and be drinking juice? Um, and be watching Go TV or Dress TV. What will you do? Huh? You will rise and yawn. How much more is God? So he can arise and he can walk. Amen. And whenever he does that, incredible things must surely take place. God cannot rise in I do. Whenever he arises, God cannot rise in I do. Yes, whenever he arises, there is a divine purpose for it. There is an emergency purpose. There is a divine intervention purpose. There is a divine suddenness purpose. This that need is urgent attention. Whenever God arrives, in essence, God is asking, Can I help you? Can I be involved? Can I bring my knowledge and power into this situation? Will you trust me with this battle? Will you take your hands off so that I can put mine on? This is what the Bible says. Large God arise and his enemy be scattered. Can you shout, Lord God, arise? Oh, let your voice sound like thunder. And Lord, his enemy be scattered. You have to open God for him to come in. This is why I said, I stand and I knock. He stand at the door with more power that we can ever dream of. I shared my story with you. The doctor were almost giving up on me. And they were telling me, see, we are going to refer you to Lutz. And that night, I cry. I cry. I cry. And I pray from 
my heart. And that night, he arise. He walk into the hospital. There were many people in that world. But he came directly because I was the one who called on him. Will you call on him today? I said, will you call on him? He came to where I was lying down. He put his hand on me and prayed for me. That was all. The next day, the next day, I came down from the bed. I told my mom, I want to go and ease myself. She wanted to hold me. I said, no, don't worry. I came down. I take the first step. I take the second step. I take the first step. And the more I walk, the more I was gaining strength, the more I was, I was gaining strength. Beloved, if God comes to you, your life never remains the same. That death sentence of the enemy on your life, that death sentence of the enemy concerning your life, he will reverse it. He will remove it. Hallelujah. He won't break the door. He will not break the door to come inside. You are the one to open the door for him to come. This is why he said, I knock at the door. He did not say, if you will not open the door for me, I will break inside and come. No. You must open the door. And then let him come in. So many people say, I'm waiting on God. The truth is, God is waiting on you. He is waiting for you to recognize that you need Him. He is waiting on you to admit that you need Him. He is waiting for you to call on His name, to cry out to Him. When the blind man cried the first time, they shut him up. He quiet. But the man would not surrender. He would not give up. He cried more. Jesus, the Son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, shut up. You are disturbing me. Oh my God. Amen. God will respect your right to fight your own battle by yourself. He said, No, no, I will handle it myself. I will he will say, No problem, go we'll handle it yourself. He won't interfere with your plans. When you are determined to do it. And that is why you must understand. If you don't have him in your life, if you are not members of his family, there is a serious problem. Because he hears the voice of his own. He do what? Eh? Before we pray, what are the things that will happen when God arises? The first thing is that He will pardon iniquity. We saw the case of that in Luke 15, verse 20. That was a story of the 
the prodigal son. After he has walked away from the ways of God, and he repented of his sin, and returned back to God. Verse 20 says, So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arm around him and kissed him. And that's the reason why. The first thing you need to address is there any sin that would not allow him to arise? You need the pardon of those sins so that the Lord can arise. So when the Lord arise, He will pardon your iniquities. He will forgive your sin. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, when He arise, it will break the bone of your enemy. The bone is a symbol of their strength. It's a symbol of their power. It's a symbol of what the enemy is capable of doing. What the enemy rely on. Amen. Amen. I have a good news for somebody here. What your enemy rely on that he is using to fight you, the Lord will break it. Oh, somebody is not saying amen. I said the Lord will break it in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 3, verse 7. Arise, O Lord. Save me. O my God. For thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the sheep bone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. So when the Lord arises, you break the bone of your enemy. That is what he did to Goliath. He did not only kill him, he break his bone. Number three, it will disappoint the evil expectation of man concerning your life. Some people look at your life, they said nothing good can come out from your life. So you cannot see progress. It cannot become anything. This one is born to fail. Who has said it when God has not commanded it? The Bible says Arise, O Lord. Let not man prevail. Psalm 9 verse 19. 9 verse 19. Psalm 9 verse 19. Arise, O Lord. Let not man prevail. Let the hidden be judged in thy sight. You see, you see that? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will disappoint the evil expectation of man concerning your life. You see, in this life, there are people who hate you without a cause. In fact, there is nobody who does not have an enemy that somebody that is wishing him bad. <laughs> no matter how good you are, no matter how kind you are, there is somebody who will not like you. And the person rejoices whenever he hears that something bad happened to you. Amen? Amen. Yes. But when the Lord arise, 
man will not prevail against you they will be judged hallelujah so when God arrives will disappoint the expectation of man number four he will remember the humble he will remember the humble every life of humility is a seed when you live a humble life is a seed no matter the level you are humble yourself behave as if you are not in you don't even have anything depending on God because when God arrives he will remember those that are humble there are several cases of that in the Bible where the king did, did, did uh, where, where the king decided to open book of remembrance and some certain people were discovered and they were favored because of humility amen sometimes that's true sometimes that's true arise O lord god lift up thy hand forget not the humble number five number five he will deliver the poor from oppressions he will he will do what eh? he will deliver the poor from oppressions in psalm 12 verse 5 psalm 12 verse 5 for the oppression of the poor for the sign of the needle now will I arise say the Lord I will set him in safety from him that perfect at him I pray for you in the name of Jesus you will be delivered from oppression I say you will be delivered from oppression if you are saying amen say a better amen say a better amen say a better amen the Lord is changing some level today a shift is taking place in some life today and the Lord is going to move you from nothing to something in the mighty name of Jesus listen there is no one that God cannot lift up if you can humble yourself if you can believe in God if you can discover the purpose and the plan of God for your life number six it will disappoint the crafty of the wicked crafty is the secret plan of the enemy the evil intention of the enemy concerning your life they may decide that let us go into his den and let us praise him I told you of the case of a, of a brother that was bite by a snake in the dream yes in the dream a snake bited him he woke up and, and saw the mark of the things on his body <laughs> praise God but the brother is still alive is still alive amen I pray for you you will not die before your time in the name of Jesus 
They invoke the spirit of a man in evil coven. They thought they have killed him. They went to check. They thought in their house they would be crying and mourning. When they got there to use Thai to check, the man was still very, very healthy. Not even a, not not even a single headache. He would disappoint the craft of the wicked. In Psalm 17, verse 11 to 13. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey. And as it were a young lion locking in secret places. Arise, O God, disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Hallelujah. Somebody is not shouting hallelujah. Number seven, it will show mercy. It will show mercy. The Lord 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 will show mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number eight. He will make a way where there is no way. He will make a way where there is no way. Jesus told me. He said the message I gave to you. Send it to Robert Browning. And that was a man who lived in US. I don't have money to go and meet him. And I don't have his contact. I became very confused. But I remember he will make a way where there is no way. And that was the reason why I believe so much in supernatural and the incredible. God can do things that seem impossible to man. Only if you can believe. Do you believe? If you believe, say, I believe. Say it again. And then I prayed. I said, Lord, I do not have money to go and meet this man. I do not have his contacts. But you said I should send a message to him. But I want you to give me the email of this man in my dream. I pray that night. I pray very well. I pray and I, I, I used to tell you, when you pray, you will know you pray. Amen. Amen. Prayer has different frequency. There is a way you pray. After prayer, you will not be happy because you do not pray the way you really want. And sometimes you will pray. You will feel very full because you know you have prayed. And that night, the email was given to me in the dream. I woke up. You see, I learned something that there are some certain things, certain direction from God. When God give it, give it to you, you need to write it down because in the next 10, 15 minutes, you may forget completely. So I wrote down the email and then in the morning I sent the message to him and the man replied back. That was one of the greatest miracles in my life. 
Amen. Amen. And from there, connection begin to come from different parts of the world. It might be that that helper has lost your contact. But I want to speak prophetically into your life. The number will appear in that phone. Oh my God. <laughs> I said that number will appear there. I want you to expect the phone call. The number will appear. Amen. 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 When I pray some prayer for some people, they say, <laughs> they don't know what you're talking about. And at the end, they, they will say, oh, oh, He sent it to <laughs> Because the Bible says, With God, all things are possible. Say with God, all things are possible in my life. Say it again. Say it again. So it's going to make a way where there is no way. Amen. Amen. I remember a conference we want to do. That was our annual conference. And we were expecting a lot of people. Our members were coming from Kogi State, coming from Ekiti State, from Ibadan, and some from Kaduna some that are living in Plato, some in Abuja. And the normal thing we normally do is that whenever they want to come like that, we used to support with transportation. And then to feed that crowd of people for four days, three square men, and the day was getting more close and close. I begin to pray. I have somebody who was like a mother to me in the Lord. Oh, she said, don't, don't worry. So I rely on her. She sent money. I was not able to get the money. So she went back to collect her money. <laughs> so I was now left with me and God. I want to tell you that God make a way where there was no way. A fed of three square men. In fact, after the program, we still have some food stuff left that we gave to some of our people. Hallelujah. Let him arise. You will be surprised. You just fold your hand like this. And you will begin to walk. In the name that is above every other name. He is making a way for that woman. He is making a way for that man. If you are the one, rise up and say, receive it. Number nine. When he arrives, shame that is preventing you from fulfilling your destiny will fall off. Shames, shames. Yes, it will fall. And that shame is falling. I said that shame is falling. That shame is broken. Number 10. When God arrives, your mountain will be removed. 11. When God arrives, your storm will be still. 
And that storm is still today. And number 12, when God arrives, everything the enemy has stolen from you will be restored. When I mention it, you will say, I will receive it back. Joy! Happiness! Peace! Freedom! Possessions! Wealth! Connections! Opportunity! receive it in the name of Jesus. So what can we do for God to arise? Number one, you must honor his invitation. His invitation is a call to salvation. You must be genuinely born again. Two, you must pray with faith. The hands of the Lord is straight forth now. The hands of the Lord is straight forth now. The hands of the Lord is straight forth now. Healing, saving, delivering. We do more and we mean more. Everything is possible by the finger of God. That is, you pray with faith. As I leave this place, I enter into my miracle. I enter into my connection. You pray with faith. Prayer with faith is prayer with expectation. You, you expect what to pray for. Amen. Our uh, workers can testify to it. There are a lot of massive step of faith that appear as if it's like this man is crazy. And yet. God show up. There is a power in faith. I want to prophesy. Receive the weapon of faith. Number three, you must praise him well heartedly. Dance and praise him. Rejoice and be glad. This will move God to arise. Number four, Honor his servant. Don't be among by batters of pastors. Don't be among the by batters of pastors. God cannot use his servant for you if you dishonor if you dishonor them. Five. You must give heartily. There are giving that don't move God. There is a case of one of our, one of our member I was ministering that day as I was ministering and the Lord gave me some prophetic word. And the Lord said somebody is here there is a test that is coming and it's a test of your breakthrough. If you pass the test and obey the instruction, God said is going to surprise you and change your story. And there was a family in ministry things were very bad. On several times, myself and my wife, we gave them food stuff, and so we were doing our best to help them and believing God for them. And the Holy Spirit told that woman, 
That message is about to you. You see, when they give you that salary because she is te- she's, she's doing teaching work in one small school. I want you to learn from that. Amen. Are you are you with me? Are you sure? If you are here, say I am here. And the Holy Spirit told her that salary when they give you don't touch don't touch five naira from it go and give the money to the church amen it was hard for her you know when you have enough it is sometimes it's easy to give except if you are stingy but when you when when hundred percent of your hope and a lot of calculation and plan is already is already there before the money even comes, and now the Holy Spirit is saying that same money that you have calculations, how you want to settle your share marker, how you want to settle so and so person is the same money. The Holy Spirit is saying everything. Don't touch five naira. Go and give everything away. You know it's very hard. <laughs> She told, told her husband. Her husband said, Go ahead. It is good to have a husband or a wife that believe in God. Amen. And they gave the money to the church. I don't know, maybe it was Povacoma or the church they were attending. I don't know. Amen. Amen. And something I want you to listen. Are you listening to me? And something happened. Her husband has applied for a work in Lagos many years ago. And they dump that thing. That thing they dump it somewhere. <laughs> they just freeze somewhere. After they took that step, they obeyed the prophetic word. Then the phone call came. The phone call came. Are you Mr. So and so? He said yes. He said you apply for so and so work in so and so place. He has forgotten. He said no, no. He told me he think very well. Think he remember her. It's true. Yes, I apply. I apply. Only God knows how. The angel is sent to go and pick his file and, and put it among the people that just newly applied. Only God knows. The man, by the time he got there, see, obey God. Obey God. When he got there, the way the, the boss was talking with him, people were asking him, they said, did you know each other before? He said no. He said ah. <laughs> you are lucky. That was how God changed the story of that family. From coming to the doorstep and say, please, a big power, the battle. Oh my goodness. God will change your story. God will change your story. But don't forget, there was something she did. She gave. She gave. That was the test. That was the test. Amen. That was the test. If she failed the test, the blessing will not come. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will arise for you. Number six. Do something special in his house. It was in the house of God. Myself and my brother, we went to clean. The prophetic word came concerning my life. 
Do something special in his house. God bear me witness. Anywhere I go, I always see something. I there is something I need to do in this place. Oh, I don't want to behave like a guest in the house of God. Is it the what I will walk in the house of God? Amen. I will walk in the house of God. Do something special. Because your breakthrough can be connected to that. And number seven. Remind him of his promises. Remind him of what? Eh? Remind him of what? Remind him of his promises. Father, you said so and so thing. Your promise to me says so and so thing. This will trigger God to arise. I see the Lord is rising. If you believe, rise up. Rise up. Rise up. I don't want to pay, I don't want to spend much time in prayer. Because there is a word of fire and power that is going to come. And that is going to address that situation of your life. Victory. Deliverance and breakthrough, intervention, restoration, connection, restored opportunity. But begin to ask for his mercy. Tell him to show you mercy. Open your mouth and pray. Ask for his mercy. Ask for his mercy. Tell him to show you mercy. Lord, show me mercy to you. Any sin that will not allow you to arise for me. Oh my God. Ah. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. Open your mouth. Pray, 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 pray. Open your mouth and pray. Yes. Show me mercy. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Listen. We want to pray in a new dimension today. It is only those that are in the spirit that we keep into this prophetic move. If I shall let God arise, you begin to pray and ask one thing. Then, then I say in Jesus' name we pray. Then I say let God arise again. Then you begin to ask the second thing. Please don't miss this moment. I can see the hands of the Lord in our midst. And that hands is going to work in your situation. Are you ready? Don't allow your children to distract you. Don't allow your phone to distract you. Make sure that you are in the spirit. Amen? There is a brother here. The Lord said you are not in the place you ought to be. But if you can key into this moment, a shift is going to take place in a miraculous way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. yes. Yes. 
Yes, cry to him, cry to him, cry to him. The miracle worker is here, the miracle worker is here, the miracle worker is here, the miracle worker is here. You are not too small to receive from him. It's never too late. Yes. 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 Aha. 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 Yes. 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 In Jesus name we have prayed. That's the second prayer. That's the second prayer. Yes. Yes. Maha Popo Sunda Yamaha Masinda. The hands of the Lord is doing something now. Interpreter, pray, pray. Yes. Yes, 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 Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that life you are turning around. Yes, yes, thank you for that victory. Thank you for that victory. Yes, aha, aha. Jesus name we pray. Lord God arise. Holy La kapa sanda ya ma hobo sonda ya ma hesenda ye sanda ya ma sanda inda mo mo chi ma sonda ya ma pa sanda ye ke ko
Jesus name we pray. Lord God Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. In Jesus' name we pray. This is the last one before I seal it up. Know what you are doing right now. Know what you are doing right now. Lord God, arise! In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I don't know who the person is, but there is something I received that an helper is coming that we take care of the education of that your child. Yes. That we carry the responsibility that you won't have to bother about school fees again. I receive it very strongly in my spirit. And I pray everything that needed to take place that God has to do that will bring to pass that will give you rest of mind receive it in Jesus name hallelujah raise up your two hand Lord, your children, they have cried, we have cried on you. Because we know you have ears to hear. 
you are living God. You did it before. She will do it again. Be thou exalted. In the name of Jesus. That good thing you have asked. I seal it up. 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 You will testify. Thank you, Jesus. God gave somebody a testimony. But you have been harboring that testimony. Uh, I will do my best to make sure that we give room to testimony. If you want to remain, uh, you don't want anybody to know, you can write your testimony and then we will help you share your testimony. We won't mention your name. So make sure that you do that so that we can share your testimony so that God can seal it up. I prophesy into your life what God has done in your life today shall be permanent. In the name of Jesus. You will see the glory of God. You will see the glory of God. That good thing that is difficult for you to achieve. Receive divine capacity. Receive wealth capacity. Receive financial capacity. Receive provision capacity. In the name of Jesus, the miracle God has done in your life shall be permanent. It is done. Seal up the prayer with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you are the first person to testify, shout hallelujah! Clap for Jesus and have your seats. Praise the Lord. We bless God for what the Lord has done in our life. To him alone be your glory and honor. I hope you all know that this week is loaded. Isn't it? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So tomorrow we'll be here by the grace of God being the second day of this special program. And there are some of our members that ought to be here today who we were not here because we have to split ourselves because of a uh, occasion that is going on over there in Badagri. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this week is a special week. By the grace of God, all of us will be here tomorrow again. And I hope you don't forget our deal on Friday. <laughs> Do you remember our deal? Do you remember? If you remember, can I see your hand? What is it, ma? Eh? Eh? That book, I will not mention it too. That book. 
that place. Hey. Person who can read it without checking his Bible. There's going to be a gift for that person. So I want to encourage you, please make sure you invite somebody. It is going to be a wonderful moment in the presence of the Lord. It's going to be a what? A wonderful moment. Invite your friends. Invite your family. And the Lord is going to bless you. So this time, this is a time for us to be our brother's keeper in our in any little with any little capacity. So please make sure you invite somebody. And the Lord is going to bless you as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus. So tomorrow again 4 p.m. Then uh, Saturday is going to be 9, 9 a.m. It's going to be a very special program. And I want to tell you, please, stop coming late to the presence of God. I've told you it is not good to come late to the presence of God. Except if you have genuine excuse. Oh, not means our blessing in Jesus' name. Say a better amen. Say a better amen. So tomorrow I'll be looking forward to see every one of us on time. And the Saturday by what time? Eh? By 9 a.m. Make sure you come on time. And the Lord is going to bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Amen. Amen. Rise up on your feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you blessed today? Are you sure you are blessed? If you are blessed, shout hallelujah! Those of us that apply for Bible, I want you to calm down. What did I say? Calm down. Uh, by the, when the time comes, it will be given to you. Praise the Lord. Let us share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the miracle that God has done in our life, we are going to shout seven hallelujah. After shouting that hallelujah, you will go and tell seven persons, because of me, God has arisen. Because of who? No, I say because of me. You, see, you will point to me and say because of you. You know what I say? I say because of me. Are you ready? I say, are you ready? Are you sure? Someone, hallelujah!